Hi, in this lesson, you'll learn a little bit more about Carol. Here is an example of one of Carol's worlds. Carol's world isn't always a simple blank grid. Carol's world can be different sizes and contain different objects like tennis balls and walls. Carol's starting position can also be at any space on the grid. All of the edges in Carol's world are walls. Walls are barriers that Carol cannot move through. If Carol tries to move through a wall, Carol will crash. Another important characteristic of Carol is the direction that Carol is facing. Carol can face four directions, north, south, east, or west. Oftentimes, we will refer to the front side, left side, and the right side of Carol. These sides are relative to the direction that Carol is facing. For example, if Carol is facing east, the front side of Carol is in the east direction, the left side of Carol is in the north direction, and the right side of Carol is in the south direction. But if Carol is facing north, the front side of Carol is in the north direction, the left side of Carol will be in the west direction, and then the right side of Carol is in the east direction. When we command Carol to turn left, Carol rotates 90 degrees and faces a different direction. If Carol is facing east and turns left, Carol will then be facing north, or if Carol is facing north and turns left, Carol will then be facing west. With that, it's time to program our second Carol program. In the starting world, Carol starts in the first row and first column facing east. In the ending world, Carol is in that same position, but there are four tennis balls in the shape of a square added to the grid. So let's dive in and create this program. I'm going to have Carol start her tennis ball square here. So the first thing I want her to do is move and then put a ball. Let's run that. Great. Now I need Carol to move to the square, so I'll need her to turn left. Let's run this again. Great, now Carol's facing the right direction. One quick note, I could also have had Carol move, turn left, and then put ball. Both of these end up with Carol facing the right direction and a ball where she's standing. With this in mind, sometimes the order of our code matters, and sometimes it doesn't. This is just something we have to pay close attention to. All right, back to the code. Now I can tell Carol to move, put ball, and then turn left again. Let's run that. All right, and again, we'll tell her to move, put ball, and turn left. Check our work by running it. And last but not least, one more move, put ball, and turn left. And we did it. A few notes. Notice how I have empty lines on lines 4, 8, and 12. These are just to help organize my code. The computer ignores them and skips right over them. So if I deleted these lines, we'll see that the program runs exactly the same way. One other thing. I started in this position, but I could also have started with the position Carol starts in. In programming, we can approach the same problem in multiple ways. So now it's your turn to write some Carol programs.